This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Bryant. Paradise Lost by John Milton. Book 3. Part 2. No sooner had the Almighty ceased, but all the multitude of angels, with a shout loud as from numbers without number, sweet as from blessed voices, uttering joy, heaven rung with jubilee, and loud hosannas filled the eternal regions. Lowly reverent towards either throne they bow, and to the ground with solemn adoration down they cast their crowns inwove with amaranth and gold, immortal amaranth a flower which once in paradise, fast by the tree of life, began to bloom. But soon for man's offense to heaven removed, where first it grew, there grows, and flowers aloft, shading the fount of life. And where the river of bliss through midst of heaven rolls o'er Elysian flowers her amber stream. With these that never fade, the spirits elect bind their resplendent locks enwreathed with beams. Now in loose garlands thick thrown off, the bright pavement that like a sea of jasper shone empurpled with celestial roses smiled. Then, crowned again, their golden harps they took, harps ever tuned, that glittering by their side like quivers hung, and with preamble sweet of charming symphony they introduced their sacred song and wakened raptures high. No voice exempt, no voice but well could join melodious part, such concord is in heaven. Thee, Father, first they sung omnipotent, immutable, immortal, infinite, eternal King, thee, author of all being, fountain of light, thyself invisible amidst the glorious brightness where thou sitst, throned inaccessible. But when thou shadest the full blaze of thy beams, and through a cloud drawn round about thee like a radiant shrine, Dark with excessive bright thy skirts appear, yet dazzle heaven, that brightest seraphim approach not, but with both wings veil their eyes. Thee next they sang of all creation first, begotten Son, divine similitude, in whose conspicuous countenance, without cloud made visible, the Almighty Father shines, whom else no creature can behold. On thee impressed, the effulgence of his glory abides. Transfused on thee, his ample spirit rests. He, heaven of heavens, and all the powers therein, by thee created, and by thee threw down the aspiring dominations. Thou that day thy father's dreadful thunder didst not spare, nor stop thy flaming chariot wheels that shook heaven's everlasting frame, while o'er the next thou drovest of warring angels disarrayed. Back from pursuit, thy powers with loud acclaim thee only extolled, son of thy father's might, to execute fierce vengeance on his foes, not so on man. Him through their malice fallen, father of mercy and grace, thou didst not doom so strictly, but much more to pity incline. No sooner did thy dear and only son perceive thee purposed not to doom frail man so strictly, but much more to pity inclined, he to appease thy wrath, and end the strife of mercy and justice in thy face discerned, regardless of the bliss wherein he sat second to thee, offered himself to die for man's offense. O unexampled love, love nowhere to be found less than divine. Hail, Son of God! Saviour of men, thy name shall be the copious matter of my song henceforth, and never shall my harp thy praise forget, nor from thy father's praise disjoin. Thus they in heaven, above the starry sphere, their happy hours in joy and hymning spent. Meanwhile upon the firm opacous globe of this round world, whose first convex divides the luminous inferior orbs, enclosed from chaos, and the inroad of darkness old, Satan alighted walks. A globe far off, it seemed, now seems a boundless continent, dark, waste, and wild, under the frown of night starless exposed, and ever-threatening storms of chaos blustering round, in clement sky, save on that side which from the wall of heaven, though distant far, some small reflection gains of glimmering air less vexed with tempest loud, 
Here walked the fiend at large in spacious field, as when a vulture on Emmaus bred, whose snowy ridge the roving tartar bounds, dislodging from a region scarce of prey, to gorge the flesh of lambs or yeanling kids on hills where flocks are fed, flies toward the springs of Ganges or Hidaspes, Indian streams, but in his way lights on the barren plains of Saracana, where Chineses drive with sails and wind their caney wagons light. So on this windy sea of land the fiend walked up and down alone, bent on his prey, alone for other creature in this place, living or lifeless, to be found was none. None yet, but store hereafter from the earth, up hither like aerial vapors flew of all things transitory and vain, when sin with vanity had filled the works of men, both all things vain, and all who in vain things built their fond hopes of glory or lasting fame, or happiness in this or the other life, all who have their reward on earth, the fruits of painful superstition and blind zeal, not seeking but the praise of men, here find fit retribution, empty as their deeds, all the unaccomplished works of nature's hand, abortive, monstrous, or unkindly mixed, dissolved on earth, fleet hither, and in vain till final dissolution, wander here, not in the neighboring moon as some have dreamed. Those argent fields more likely habitants translated saints, or middle spirits hold betwixt the angelical and humankind. Hither, of ill-joined sons and daughters born first from the ancient world, those giants came with many a vain exploit, though then renowned. The builders next of Babel on the plain of Senear, and still with vain design new Babels, had they wherewithal, would build. Others came single. He who, to be deemed a god, leaped fondly into Atna flames, Empodocles, and he who, to enjoy Plato's Elysium, leaped into the sea, Cleombrotus, and many more, too long, embryos and idiots, Aramites and friars, white, black, and gray, with all their trumpery. Here pilgrims roam, that strayed so far to seek in Golgotha him dead, who lives in heaven. And they, who to be sure of paradise, dying put on the weeds of Dominic, or in Franciscan think to pass disguised, they pass the planet seven, and pass the fixed, and that crystalline sphere, whose balance weighs the trepidation talked, and that first moved, and now St. Peter at heaven's wicket seems to wait them with his keys, and now at foot of heaven's ascent they lift their feet, when, lo, a violent cross-wind from either coast blows them transverse ten thousand leagues awry into the devious air. Then might ye see cowls, hoods, and habits with their wearers tossed and fluttered into rags, then relics, beads, indulgences, dispenses, pardons, bulls, the sport of winds. All these up whirled aloft, fly o'er the backside of the world far off into a limbo large and broad, since called the paradise of fools, to few unknown long after, now unpeopled and untrod. All this dark globe the fiend found as he passed, and long he wandered, till at last a gleam of dawning light turned thitherward in haste his travelled steps. Far distant he descries, ascending by degrees magnificent, up to the wall of heaven a structure high, at top whereof, but far more rich appeared the work as of a kingly palace gate with frontispiece of diamond and gold embellished. Thick with sparkling orient gems the portal shone, inimitable on earth by model or by shading pencil drawn. The stairs were such as whereon Jacob saw angels ascending and descending, bands of guardians bright. When he from Esau fled to Padan Aram in the field of Luz, dreaming by night, under the open sky, and waking cried, This is the gate of heaven. Each stair mysteriously was meant, nor stood there always, but drawn up to heaven sometimes viewless, and underneath a bright sea flowed of jasper, or of liquid pearl, whereon who after came from earth, sailing arrived, wafted by angels, or flew o'er the lake, wrapped in a chariot drawn by fiery steeds. The stairs were then let down, whether to dare the fiend by easy ascent, or aggravate his sad exclusion from the doors of bliss. 
direct against which opened from beneath, just o'er the blissful seat of paradise, a passage down to the earth, a passage wide, wider by far than that of after times over Mount Zion. And though that were large, over the promised land to God so dear, by which to visit oft those happy tribes, on high behests his angels to and fro passed frequent, and his eye with choice regard from Paneus, the fount of Jordan's flood, to Beir Saba, where the holy land borders on Egypt and the Arabian shore. So wide the opening seemed, where bounds were set to darkness such as bound the ocean wave. Satan, from hence now on the lower stair that scaled by steps of gold to heaven gate, looks down with wonder at the sudden view of all this world at once, as when a scout through dark and desert ways with peril gone all night, at last, by break of cheerful dawn, obtains the brow of some high-climbing hill, which to his eye discovers unaware the goodly prospect of some foreign land first seen, or some renowned metropolis with glistering spires and pinnacles adorned, which now the rising sun gilds with his beams. Such wonder seized, though after heaven seen the spirit malign, but much more envy seized at sight of all this world beheld so fair. Round he surveys, and well might, where he stood so high above the circling canopy of night's extended shade, from eastern point of Libra to the fleecy star that bears Andromeda far off Atlantic seas beyond the horizon, then from pole to pole he views in breadth, and without longer pause down right into the world's first region throws his flight precipitant, and winds with ease through the pure marble air his oblique way amongst innumerable stars that shone stars distant, but nigh hand seemed other worlds, or other worlds they seemed, or happy isles, like those Hesperian gardens famed of old, fortunate fields, and groves, and flowery vales, thrice happy isles, but who dwelt happy there he stayed not to inquire. Above them all the golden sun in splendor likest heaven allured his eye. Thither his course he bends through the calm firmament, but up or down by center or eccentric, hard to tell, or longitude, where the great luminary aloof the vulgar constellations thick that from his lordly eye keep distance due, dispenses light from far. They, as they move their starry dance in numbers that compute days, months, and years, towards his all-cheering lamp, turn swift their various motions, or are turned by his magnetic beam that gently warms the universe, and to each inward part with gentle penetration, though unseen, shoots invisible virtue even to the deep. So wondrously was set his station bright. There lands the fiend, a spot like which perhaps astronomer in the sun's lucent orb through his glazed optic tube yet never saw. The place he found beyond expression bright, compared with aught on earth, metal or stone. Not all parts like, but all alike informed with radiant light, as glowing iron with fire. If metal, part seemed gold, part silver clear, if stone carbuncle most, or chrysolite, ruby or topaz, to the twelve that shone in Aaron's breastplate, and a stone besides imagined rather oft than elsewhere seen, that stone, or like to that which here below philosophers in vain so long have sought, in vain, though by their powerful art they bind volatile Hermes, and call up unbound in various shapes old Proteus from the sea, drained through a limbeck to his native form. What wonder, then, if fields and regions here breathe forth elixir pure, and rivers run potable gold, when with one virtuous touch the archchemic sun, so far from us remote, produces with terrestrial humor mixed here in the dark so many precious things of color glorious and effect so rare? Here matter new to gaze the devil met undazzled, far and wide his eye commands, for sight no obstacle found here, nor shade, but all sunshine, as when his beams at noon culminate from the equator, as they now shot upward still direct, whence no way round shadow from body opaque can fall, and the air nowhere so clear sharpened his visual ray to objects distant far, whereby he soon saw within ken a glorious angel stand, 
the same whom John saw also in the sun. His back was turned, but not his brightness hid. Of beaming sunny rays a golden tire circled his head, nor less his locks behind illustrious on his shoulders fledged with wings lay waving round. On some great charge employed he seemed, or fixed in cogitation deep. Glad was the spirit impure, as now in hope, to find who might direct his wandering flight to paradise, the happy seat of man, his journey's end and our beginning woe. But first he casts to change his proper shape, which else might work him danger or delay, and now a stripling cherub he appears, not of the prime, yet such as in his face youth smiled celestial, and to every limb suitable grace diffused, so well he feigned. Under a coronet his flowing hair in curls on either cheek played, wings he wore of many a colored plume sprinkled with gold, his habit fit for speed succinct, and held before his decent steps a silver wand. He drew not nigh unheard, the angel bright, ere he drew nigh, his radiant visage turned, admonished by his ear, and straight was known the archangel Uriel, one of the seven who in God's presence, nearest to his throne, stand ready at command, and are his eyes that run through all the heavens, or down to the earth bear his swift errands over moist and dry, or sea and land. Him Satan thus accosts. Uriel, for thou of those seven spirits that stand in sight of God's high throne, gloriously bright, the first art wont his great authentic will interpreter through highest heaven to bring where all his sons thy embassy attend, and here art likeliest by supreme decree like honor to obtain, and as his eye to visit oft this new creation round, unspeakable desire to see and know all these his wondrous works, but chiefly man his chief delight and favor, him for whom all these his works so wondrous he ordained, hath brought me from the choirs of cherubim alone thus wandering, Brightest seraph, tell in which of all these shining orbs hath man his fixed seat, or fixed seat hath none but all these shining orbs his choice to dwell, that I may find him, and with secret gaze, or open admiration, him behold on whom the great Creator hath bestowed worlds, and on whom hath all these graces poured, that both in him and all things as is meet, the universal Maker we may praise who justly hath driven out his rebel foes to deepest hell, and to repair that loss created this new happy race of men to serve him better. Wise are all his ways. So spake the false dissembler unperceived, for neither man nor angel can discern hypocrisy, the only evil that walks invisible except to God alone, by his permissive will through heaven and earth. And oft though wisdom wake, suspicion sleeps at wisdom's gate and to simplicity resigns her charge, while goodness thinks no ill where no ill seems, which now for once beguiled Uriel, though regent of the sun, and held the sharpest-sided spirit of all in heaven, who to the fraudulent impostor foul in his uprightness answer thus returned, Fair angel, thy desire which tends to know the works of God, thereby to glorify the great work master, leads to no excess that reaches blame but rather merits praise the more it seems excess that led thee hither from thy empyreal mansion thus alone to witness with thine eyes what some perhaps contented with report here only in heaven for wonderful indeed are all his works pleasant to know and worthiest to be all had in remembrance always with delight but what created mind can comprehend their number or the wisdom infinite that brought them forth but hid their causes deep I saw when at his word the formless mass, this world's material mold, came to a heap. Confusion heard his voice, and wild uproar stood ruled, stood vast infinitude confined, till at his second bidding darkness fled, light shone, and order from disorder sprung. Swift to their several quarters hasted then the cumbrous elements, earth, flood, air, fire, and this ethereal quintessence of heaven flew upward, spirited with various forms, that rolled orbicular, and turned to stars numberless, as thou seest, and how they move. Each had his place appointed, each his course, the rest in circuit walls this universe. 
Look downward on that globe, whose hither side with light from hence, though but reflected, shines. That place is earth, the seat of man, that light his day, which else, as the other hemisphere, night would invade. But there the neighboring moon, so called that opposite fair star, her aid timely interposes, and her monthly round still ending, still renewing through mid-heaven. With borrowed light her countenance tri-form hence fills and empties to enlighten the earth, and in her pale dominion checks the night. That spot to which I point is paradise, Adam's abode, those lofty shades his bower. Thy way thou canst not miss, me mine requires. Thus said he turned, and Satan bowing low, as to superior spirits is wont in heaven, where honor due and reverence none neglects, took leave and toward the coast of earth beneath, down from the ecliptic, sped with hoped success, throws his steep flight in many an airy wheel, nor stayed till on Nifates' top he lights. End of Book 3, Part 2